Hi guys, welcome to the second part of uh, my little video series on how to make an authentic Viking shield. Um, in the first episode I was talking about how I work the wooden board and um, there have been a couple of questions regarding the wood. Now, um, this here is poplar wood. Um, most Viking shields appear to have been of uh, some kind of uh, pine or fir. Now, uh, what is also important is that um, Viking shields were made from split planks. So the tree trunk was split radially and um, these boards were then uh, thinned down by uh, use of according tools um, to produce the planks. The planks of shields like this uh, are about seven millimeters in average. Usually they are somewhat stronger in the middle section, in the center, and then in uh, cross section there is a distal taper towards the edge. Now with uh, some shields um, there's not so much of a regular taper but more uh, of a taper closer to the edge uh, which looks almost looks like they sharpened the wooden edge to uh, produce a really, really fine edge. So the, the overall uh, delicacy of these boards is quite surprising. Um, and um, many people think like, eh, yeah, but a shield like that wouldn't be very solid wooded. Uh, so it's probably not good for blocking solid hits with a Danax or with whatever. Sure, you can destroy everything, right? But um, uh, the fact remains that the boards were as delicate as they were. So if uh, we reconstruct combat, um, then we should look at the authentic material and use this and find out how this was used rather than uh, saying, oh, well, this shield doesn't live up to my uh, sword related hobby, so it's useless. Right? So if we are reconstructing actual combat, we have to create the tools, the weapons, as authentically as possible. Here I have a, a complete hide. This is um, this is a goat hide, and um, it has been in water overnight, so it has been watered, and now it's soft and uh, supple. And I'm because this uh, is supposed to go onto a flat shield board. Um, I will put it. Uh, onto a um, on a, onto a, a solid a straight flat board and fix it and let it dry so that as it dries out it will be all straight so that I can easily glue it and attach it to um, to my shield later on So finally, this is um, the parchment. It has been wetted and stretched and um, I'm now in the process of thinning it down. Um, when you get the parchment, uh, what you have to make sure is that um, the grain side, that is the, um, the side where the animal's hair and fur originally was, that it, this is um, still a part of your, uh, of your raw height, of your parchment. You can, um, you can see that uh, one side is the flesh side, that's the one where you have remains of tissue left. And then when you look here, you can, see, you can still see where uh, the fur originally was. And this is the toughest part of the skin, right? It's like with your own skin, the outer part is the most resilient one and this is what you want to have on your shield. Yeah, um, a lot of the stuff that you buy when you purchase rawhide for your shields, like uh, this kind of stuff, um, 
I purchased from a supplier for living history uh, equipment and it uh, traditionally goes around reenactment shields. Um, mind you, um, in regards to actual finds um, from archaeology, there is only very little that is left of the organic material of shields. So usually we're only left with bosses, clamps of edges, uh, and other metal fittings. This is what usually survives and there's uh, sometimes there are some fragments that are rusted to the fittings or to the boss and then this is what the archaeologists use to determine um, that this was a shield covered with hide, uh, um, sandwiching an inner layer of wood and then maybe hide on the other side. So uh, to my knowledge there's absolutely no um, evidence for linen on Viking shields. Linen was used on shields um, it definitely was used in the middle, uh, medieval period. There are a couple of surviving shields from um, in, in Marburg University Museum, and um, they oftentimes have a combination. So there's elimination of uh, parchment, linen, wood, or it could be parchment, wood, parchment. Um, and there's one uh, at least that I'm aware of that is only covered with linen, but uh, not for Viking shields. So um, there's uh, some evidence for um, hide on Viking shields uh, in a grave in Birka, for instance. But then what we're talking about are just tiny fragments. And the problem with these fragments is it's really hard to tell um, whether this is raw hide or leather. There are uh, methods to determine whether um, a particular piece of hide is processed or treated leather or um, or rawhide or parchment but this works with modern samples with um, stuff that was lying in the ground for a thousand years and such methods are not very reliable because um, the hide will um, uh, will interact with the soil and whatever is um, surrounding it other organic material and then um, it's really hard to say whether uh, or it's really hard to run these tests plus you have to take samples and when what you are left with is a tiny fragment anyway then usually such tests uh, are not considered uh, worthy effort okay so um, when we look at this kind of rawhide it's much tougher because it's much thicker so this feels a lot more not, uh, like paper however in the long run, uh, it not necessarily will be more resilient than this because this has been split. So the actual skin um, is uh, not complete anymore. The top layer, which is this material, has been taken off. That's the most valuable part of, a, uh, um, of, a, of an animal skin. Um, the nice, smooth, um, grain side, the most resilient part. And then um, what you get is uh, this rather homogeneous material, however it does not have the toughest layer, the outer layer, um, anymore. So uh, this is inferior to this. But if you put something like this onto your shield, it adds a lot, lot of weight. And of course if you want to make an authentic shield, that doesn't really make much sense. So um, what I want to put onto my shield um, in order to give it a really good facing that is resilient but at the same time doesn't add much weight will be this high. And um, I'm right now in the process of thinning it down. Um, thinning, thinning it down means that um, I uh, smoothen uh, the surface, I start with the, with the flesh side. Um, and um, that gives me um, the benefit of having uh, a rather either, even layer uh, on my shield. Plus, um, the thinner the parchment is, the less it will start to absorb moisture as it is being glued to the board. Because if you, um, uh, I had that problem with uh, other shields in the past that um, I was using rather thick hide and then when I put on the hot and um, liquid hide glue then the material absorbed a lot of the moisture and thus expanded and that uh, produces bubbles and then uh, some of the moisture would go into the shield board and it will start to warp so it comes with all kinds of problems now if it's uh, thin as paper as this stuff uh, will be and 
partially already is, like here, it's this uh, really thin material, um, then it's much easier. Okay, but we go through the process of gluing this um, to my shield board in a later video. Right now, I want to show you how I thin this down. So basically, you have a number of um, uh, a number of um, tools that you can use. You could uh, use um, this leather knife just for scraping, um, scraping down, uh, scraping off material. And you can see already here how this produces little scraps of. Um, the tissue that is still clinging to the inside of the shield here. So, and by the way, all this stuff that comes off, right? You see, you see this. I collect all of this in a uh, in a little container, which I somehow cannot see right now. But all the scraps um, and all the um, stuff that you uh, scrape off you can or grind off you can use to produce your own hide glue um, which uh, I will address in a later video. So don't uh, just throw it away collect uh, all the uh, rest and collect the scraps of um, any um, raw hide uh, that are that are being left over. So you can use a scraping knife and by the way if you um, just listen to the difference of sound between this so you can hear there's a lot of um, this, the, the surface is rather uneven as compared to this. Yeah. So here's still a lot of uh, tissue um, that we don't really want to have on the nice uh, inside of our shield. So you can use a, a knife. Um, you can use um, uh, a whetstone. This Grinding over the surface. Which is quite time consuming and laborious. But it is definitely what I'm going to do uh, for, uh, for the final treatment. But of course in the age of power tools you could also use a sander. Make your life easier. So I'm constantly in the process of uh, thinning down another hive. So again, the grain side um, is the one that I want to preserve because it's the toughest part and um, the flesh side where you can see all this residue and remains of tissue. This is what I'm thinning down because I don't need all that. Uh, and um, I want to have an even thickness and a rather thin hide to um, reduce overall weight. And I found that uh, thinning down um, works best with a really, really sharp knife like this um, leather knife and then you can actually um, scrape down quite a bit of tissue with each stroke and um, this skin um, remains this tissue I keep so that I have uh, stuff that I can make my own hide glue from this will be boiled down like all the parchment and rawhide scraps I keep to make um, hide glue from. When you do this, make sure make sure that you keep your knife at an angle because you don't want to cut into the hide. I managed to do this once or twice like here, oh no, not, that's not the one, yeah, like here um, where I actually cut into the material. Also make sure that the uh, surface underneath is super flat and that no remains of um, of this hide go underneath because then as you scrape over the hide um, if there is um, just a just a, a tiny piece of hide or whatever um, it will show through the hide and you will probably um, make a hole in your hide like here this one is not so bad so that's not really a problem but um, take your time doing it you could also do it like this but I find this more tedious, plus um, when you do it then the, 
um, scraped off remains of um, the hide and the tissue, they stick to the blade and make it less efficient. So um, I find that going with gentle and long strokes produces the best result and then I put back the hide or put the hide into uh, whatever container I have to collect the scraps. And Alright, learning by doing. See you next time.